1965, a spaceship flew across the Sahara Desert. The two men inside were shocked to see something in the center of the Sahara. They couldn't believe what they were seeing. Two pilots, James McDavid and Edward White, saw a huge human-eye structure in the sand desert. It was strange that there was also a tiny gap in the middle that looked like a cornea. The eye of the Sahara measures approximately 25 miles in diameter. More than 7,143 square miles make up this eye. You may believe that this is the impact of an extremely large meteorite, but it's not. So far, scientists haven't found any proof of a meteorite impact. That's why the structure has caused so much trouble for scientists up until now. The eye in the Sahara and the map of the lost city of Atlantis are very similar. Many maps show Atlantis as a very advanced society with towns placed in a circular shape and connected by seawater bridges. Many similarities exist between the shape of the Eye of Sahara and the depiction of Atlantis. Some people and fringe theories have said that the Eye of the Sahara might be the lost city of Atlantis, but major archaeologists and geologists don't agree with this idea. Plato, an old Greek philosopher, said that the enigmatic town of Atlantis was located above the Pillars of Hercules, which many people think of as the Strait of Gibraltar, which is located away from the Sahara Desert. A lot of people also think that the tale of Atlantis is more of a myth or a metaphor than a true story. A city called Atlantae can be found on the map made by the Roman explorer Pomponius Mela 2,000 years ago. If you turn this map over and look at it from the north, you can see that Atlante, also known as Atlantis, exists to the northwest of the Sahara. The site of Atlantis is the same as the Rishat structure, also known as the Eye of the Sahara. The Eye of the Sahara is an interesting geological feature with its round shape and circular rings, but there isn't sufficient proof indicating that it is where or what it might have looked like in stories about Atlantis, even though there isn't any archaeological proof that humans lived at that time. The attempt to search for Atlantis is still a fascinating subject to think about and study. The Rishat structure's rings are so large that not even people standing between them will notice them. Scientists now widely believe that erosion and elevation created the eye of the Sahara. Over millions of years, natural processes like wind and water erosion and the land gradually rising have revealed several layers of rock in the area. These layers have circular rings, giving the structure its eye-like shape. It is so large that it always grows. Every 100 years, the Sahara grows by 10%. Why does it grow so quickly, and where does all this sand come from? Based on the white sand and white limestone structure in the middle, it looks like someone shaped it that way. But this spot was once at the bottom of the ocean millions of years ago. When dinosaurs ruled the Earth 25 million years ago, an ocean known as Tethys existed. The winds first hit this frozen layer of limestone as time went on, and new continents formed, marking the end of the ocean. The wind blew the pieces of limestone around, and they rapidly transformed into this white desert. The Sahara Desert hides a lot of secrets. We think of endless sand dunes and scorching heat when we hear the name African Sahara. However, the Sahara Desert appears arid from the sky. It was lush green at the same time in Earth's history. Eleven countries share the Sahara Desert. There are large parts of Algeria, Chad, Egypt, Libya, Mali, Mauritania, Niger, the Western Sahara, Sudan, and southern Morocco and Tunisia that are in the Sahara. It covers 31% of Africa, or 3.5 million square miles, which is approximately the same size as the United States or all of Europe. If we include all the places that receive less than 250 mmm of rain a year, the Sahara would expand to cover 4.2 million square miles. 
Other stars might be able to see the Sahara as a part of Earth's surface if they had technology similar to what we have now. The 4,160-mile-long Nile River starts in Uganda in South Africa and flows through the middle of the Sahara before ending near Egypt in the Mediterranean Sea. When North Africa changed into a desert, the Nile River was the only way for the people who lived here to stay alive. The ancient Egyptians and Greeks struggled many times to find the origin of the Nile River, but ultimately were incapable of doing so because the river has so many links. This is why the Egyptians started to worship the Nile River. They said the Nile River came from a sacred place that no one knew about. This belief has led to too many excursions throughout modern times to try to find out where the Nile comes from. It is just 200 meters shorter than the length of the Amazon River. The Sahara Desert didn't always appear this way, which is interesting. In this area of sand, scientists have found skeletons of trees and plants that can hardly survive in the extreme temperatures of the Sahara. The shape of the Sahara was not always as it is now. This area's geographical map looked very different. It was getting close to the end of the Ice Age period 26 million years ago. The world began to freeze, and there was no difference between the Earth and the oceans. Glaciers had already begun to form. Geologists say that this was the beginning of the fifth major ice age in the history of the planet. When the Earth moves closer to the Sun, its path changes, which is why it happens. Africa is located on the equator, where it did not freeze during the last ice age. Instead, it was very cold there. During this time, also known as the African humid periods, a thick layer of ice covered the entire world. At the same time, the Sahara stayed green and full of life, with hundreds of miles of lush pastures and green grass. Rivers flowed because of the rain, creating some of the world's biggest lakes. Many different kinds of animals also do well in the tropical forests. A lot of native people also came here because the Sahara was green, unlike other parts of the world, and had a temperature as pleasant as Europe today. During the last ice age, the Sahara was much bigger than it is now, going south past its present borders. Between about 8,000 BCE and 6,000 BCE, it rained more in the Sahara. This may have been because of areas of low pressure over the melting ice layers in the north. The northern Sahara dried out when the ice layers went away. The monsoon carried rain to areas farther north than it does now, which slowed down the drying trend in the southern Sahara at first. But by about 4200 BCE, the rainfall had moved south towards the point where it is now, which caused the Sahara to slowly turn into a desert. It's just as dry in the Sahara now as it was 13,000 years ago. Megachad, now known as Lake Chad, was an inland sea during the humid times of Africa. Before 5000 BCE, when it was at its biggest, Lake Megachad was the largest of four paleo lakes in the Sahara. Experts estimate that Lake Megachad once covered an area of 135,000 square miles. Experts have also found signs of exceptionally ancient human societies in Africa, which makes them think that this is where humans came from. In November 1974, researchers found the most ancient human body in Ethiopia. It's hard to believe that this body was 3.2 million years old and remains about 40%. Many religions suggest that the place where people first came together is now the continent of Africa. Science also agrees that this is where humans originated. The Enedi Plateau in the Sahara Desert is home to a hidden garden. Nomads in this area love this place even though it's hot and sandy. This spot has been a rest point for travelers moving through the Sahara for tens of thousands of years. Animals, notably camels, consume drinking water here and people relax in the cold caves. There are signs of an age in these caves when the Sahara was green. There is rock art in the places inside 
where you can see cows most prominently. This animal often lives in places where there is grass to eat. Today, only camels are able to walk here. There used to be African lions here until 1940, but they are no longer available. There are crocodiles in this secret garden, but they can't get far enough. Then how did they get to the Sahara's center? It is believed that this particular African crocodile has been present for millions of years, yet its appearance is unexpected. There are now only a few alligators living here, and their numbers are also going extinct. They eat frogs and fish in the water because they don't have anything else to eat. There is a lot of secret treasure in the Sahara. King Tutankhamun's chain contains a rare stone known as Libyan Desert Glass, one of the famous treasures discovered at his burial site in the Valley of the Kings. The Libyan Desert, located in the Sahara Desert, is believed to have produced this beautiful golden yellow gem. This gem has puzzled scientists for many years. There is only one stone like this in the whole world. Scientists worked hard for 100 years and finally found out that it is made of pure glass and that it came from the Sahara Desert about 29 million years ago when a meteorite hit and heated and melted the desert sands, making this unique mix of sand and meteoritic material. The blast would have instantly vaporized and melted the silica-rich sand around it, making a zone that was very hot. As this area cooled down quickly, the liquid silica changed into the clear to yellow-green glass that exists today. Libyan desert glass is very pure and hard to find. It also has an interesting history, which makes it a valuable material for science and an interesting part of old artifacts and jewelry. The discovery of this stone in Tutankhamun's tomb demonstrates the significance of the Sahara Desert in ancient Egyptian trade and culture. It also shows how the desert's materials affected Egyptian art and handicraft. It seems completely meaningless to mix the endless sand of the Sahara with water to make concrete for buildings or for any other useful purpose. But it is actually the sand of the Sahara that pours life into the 1,544-mile-away Amazon jungle. Each year, hundreds of millions of tons of sand fall from the sky and land in the Amazon basin. There is only 0.08% phosphorus in it, but scientists consider that's sufficient to keep the phosphorus level within the Amazon jungle stable. When it rains, the phosphorus moves into rivers. The Earth's phosphorus levels will drop if this phosphorus doesn't get into the Amazon jungle. This will halt new plant and tree growth. It's true that the Sahara Desert is the third largest on the globe, but many people still call it the biggest. Antarctica and the Arctic Desert are the first two. The Sahara really is the biggest hot desert in the world. On the other hand, Antarctica and the Arctic are some of the coldest deserts in the world. The Sahara is 9 million square kilometers, but that size changes with the seasons because the sand either gets bigger or smaller. Sand makes up just over one quarter of the Sahara. In various areas, there are rugged peaks. The sand mounds here can be up to 180 meters high, and Emikusi, which is 3,415 meters high, is the highest elevated peak in the Sahara. It's clear that this is the hottest desert in the world, but in many places it snows and gets down to minus 6 degrees Celsius. I hope you enjoyed the video and will share it with others. Thank you for watching.